You, Slayer fans, might feel betrayed today. Hi friends, it's Andriy Vasilenko, and today we are analyzing Raining Blood, seeking things that you might have not known, noticed or cared about. 1986 brought so many albums, riffs and songs that became classic. And three from the big four of thrash metal released their albums that became turning points in their careers. And I've talked so much about Megadeth and Metallica, and now it's finally the turn for fucking Slayer. Raining Blood from Raining Blood. I see what you did there, guys. Well, who doesn't? The amazing song was written by Jeff Hanneman. May he rest in peace. And it has a pretty unconventional structure, perhaps due to the way they wrote it. songs back then. The song starts with what I call hype intro, thunder and shit. And then goes the actual intro, or the main riff, or the riff. Which is followed by the galloping riff, really cool one, but unfortunately we won't hear it again in the song. Then the tempo jumps and we have the insane bridge. Then goes the first and the only verse. And then it slows down to about the intro pace, which kinda reminds the main riff, but then the actual main riff repeats again for a few measures. And where Tom Araya actually gets to play it, and then goes what we might call breakdown. But it turns out to be a calm before storm, because then sh** speeds up up to almost 250 bpm. The fastest layer they ever gotten. And the last traces of melody are crushed by musical madness, with the trademark chaos lead guitar by Jeff and Kerry. And the sort of title track has almost everything that defines Slayer. And it has a secret that you probably don't know about. And for the video I'll focus mostly on the opening part, which hides most of the jams, which even Slayer probably are not aware of. So take your instruments and notebooks, students, we're going to do a deep analysis of Rainian Blood. So I won't be beating around the bush anymore, here is the secret. And it's just 3 seconds into the song, as soon as the guitar starts. It's the note that makes Slayer songs sound like, well, Slayer songs. So among all the notes available, Can you guess which one is the one? Alright, let's make it simpler for you. Only four notes. Triton, minor second, minor third, major third. third. So which note defines the touch of Slayer? And you are wrong. Oh kurva! Well, Jeff and company indeed used Triton a lot. But what metal band does not? Then it's probably minor second. Alright, let's bass speak for me. And so we've got two options left. Major third, minor third, third. It's commonly known that major makes music sound happier while minor keys are by default darker and sadder. One of the best ways to quickly define in what key does the riff is, is to finish it on a chord that wraps it up more naturally. So let's do it with the bloody rainy one. First goes minor. Once again. Hmm. And now major. Once again for sure. Hmm. So it turns out that Possibly the most brutal song of the 80s is in a key which is the exact opposite to metal. Do you know that also defines songs such as Happy Birthday, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and I Wanna F*** Dog. Well, maybe that's just a coincidence and the next riff will fix it. Nope, it's 
still major. You may say, but man, that ain't sound happy, man. What Slayer actually does here is not natural major, nor the modes that derive from it, such as mixolydian. The evil sound comes from the notes from a Locrian mode, which goes from natural minor, natural minor, so you can rarely hear Locrian in pop music, but it's a defining feature of most metal genres. Triton and the minor second. Well, it's not forbidden to put an extra note, a chromatic note, in any scale. Surely Slayer does chromatics often, but it's particular intervals that make it sound, that make their music sound uh, Peculiar. If one uses all the 12 notes in any situation, then we are probably talking about uh, Mustaine. Well, the main riff is chromatic. All the half step uh, runs. But it's the ending G sharp that gives it this feel, this belonging to major, but if it was a fleeting note, not at the end. But something fleeting, like in this case, F sharp. It doesn't make any difference, but just. You got the point. In the Galloper Reef, it's a bit more peculiar. G sharp and C sharp, notes from major scale, go back to back. They kinda amplify each other, makes it gravitating more to the major ending. I can actually see where Jeff might have gotten inspiration. New wave of British heavy metal was like thrash metal's mom, while hardcore punk was its nasty daddy. And you now Slayer has an entire album of punk covers. And if you play a speed metal song, oh boy, boy, and the bridge. Your first reaction to this bridge could be like That does not make any sense And when you tried it on the guitar That still does not make any sense That must have been the fastest guitar riff the world had heard One note less than 70 milliseconds Or 15 notes per second This riff is on the verge of human ear perception And the palm mutant adds to the lack of clarity. And let's be honest, if it was played differently, most people would have not seen any difference. Well, doing the riff on the guitar is hell of a job. And what about bass? Let's have a listen to Tom Araya's bass track. You may be criticizing Tom for cutting corners, but in my opinion, he actually did it the right way. What was he supposed to play instead, huh? Ha! Just repeat the already vague guitar part, but on the bass strings... I don't think Tom Mariah was that suicidal. Even if he was able to pull it off, the mix would have turned into a complete mess. A metal bassist should be a mediator between the drums and guitar. And so doubling the guitar there means not doing the accents, which is actually bass's primary job. And Tom also played the Gallopier riff differently. He did it just octaves. He just goes... Without this... Tr -tr 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 which must be a piece of cake for him. But again, besides the guitar, there were also Dave Lombardo's drums. And those accents needed backing up too. And by the way, Tom Araya did not double the main riff either. He just did the lowest E accent. Ever. But he did a transpose down one octave. And that was a really tricky way to transpose it. Check out other breakdowns. We did To Live To Die, One, Fade To Black, Enter Sandman and Symphony Destruction in one video. Write in the comments which song you want me to break down next. If you liked it, subscribe, and if you want to support me, become my Patreon. Thanks for watching, it's Andriy Vasilenko, being metal.
Fuck, where's the button?